I've been working with the robotic arm since 2012. It's still an in-lab only arm, so technically the only time that I am able to use it is if I go to the lab and, and do some brushing up on it or come out to demos and show people the technology as it is. How you doing? Do you guys like to do fist pumps? Oh. Wow! From the very beginning, I mean, you know, I've been in replacement with my, with my arm. I mean, you know, I was like a young child. You know, when I see the arm, I see the arm move, you know, my you know, wide eyed, I mean all. And still to this day, I mean I even still still have that. It just still just, you know, touches me every time I put it on because now it's an extension of me. I've got a missing arm back. It's just it's just crazy. I mean I love it. So uh, a few months ago, I, I met Johnny for the first time. I have known about him for a few years. It's hard not to know about him uh, if you watch the news and you've seen the stories and the interviews. And uh, I had known Mike and the team at Johns Hopkins. Um, now it's been about three years. And they've been working with Innovation Collective on helping us kind of understand the future of robotics and AI. And you can't help but be fascinated by by this, if you're curious about robotics and AI, right? And uh, I remember shaking Johnny's hand for the first time, and mine just blown. So the lab has been working on this program for over 10 years now. And at the beginning of it, it was one of those things that everybody looked at and said, boy, you guys are crazy. So one of the things that we've learned over the past eight years is that we know we can make this work. We've used this system on with Johnny. We've used it on 20 other individuals with spinal cord injuries, multiple amputations. So we know this works and we know it's very adaptable. So Johnny is going to start a take-home trial and he's going to take this home with him for a year. And so we're going to learn all kinds of things. After a year, you know, then as it is now, then, you know, the arm goes away, you know, for me for whatever time. If you've ever had your favorite shirt, or your favorite tool, your favorite toy, whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, one day it's just disappeared, it's gone. You know, you can't find it. It hurts you in, in, a, in a way, but now can you imagine, you know, with this, and no one after the demo goes, it disappears. With it being, you know, a, a natural part of your anatomy now. We want this thing to live on, that's why, you know, we have got together and created the Starfish Foundation. Why do we call it Starfish Foundation? Because the starfish is the only, uh, I guess, fish in the sea that can lose one of its arm and grow it back. We got, yeah, Mr. Starfish here with all his <laughs> limbs. You know, from the outside, you just imagine the government's throwing money at all these things, right? Just as much as they need. And I realize that's not the case. That's not their role fully. Um, their role more is, you know, let's do the breakthrough. And then when it's there, it's up to other people to kind of pick it up and run. Everything exists for them to be able to create um, a, a lower cost arm, but there just is a, an extra push that they need with the foundation. And when I realized that, it just wrenched my heart. When it comes to the end of the day and it's time to go home, and the arm comes off and Mike packs it up in a little case, he goes back to the lab and I go back home. We cry, just cry, because it feels like I lost the arm all over again every time. So you don't think I ain't gonna enjoy a year with it? Let's get him a life with it. So, so I, I think it's my responsibility and it's your responsibility to figure out how do we help. Uh, so that's why I'm here. When I found that story out with Johnny and Mike, I realized I have to do something. And so I'm jumping in to put in some of my money. I have friends who are, and I'm asking you, can you give a dollar, five, ten, to the Starfish Prosthetics Foundation? And let's change history and do something special for all time. My goal, because we say that this thing can do anything, anything that your normal hand can do. My goal is, I've never played a piano in my life, but before the year's up, 
you're going to see me on YouTube or wherever else, I'm going to have that piano going. <laughs> Might be one song, but I'm going to have that thing going. Hi, I'm James Finney from International Tool Company. I'm sure we can all agree, a great mechanic needs a great set of tools. And where better to store them than in a premium tool chest such as this. All of this, however, does not come cheap. Just think, how much are your tools worth to you? 10 grand? 20 grand? Your entire livelihood? So, how do you protect your tools? Now, I know what you're thinking. Your toolbox is already secure, right? I mean, you've got that ferocious guard dog on duty. And luckily for thieves, however, they come on casters. That should make for a quick getaway. And you've also got that sturdy chain, haven't you? Securing your box to the wall or the ground. Something Bob the Robber here is making light work of with these bolt cutters. Little did he know, if he'd have remembered this 4 mil Allen key, he'd have made even lighter work. And let's not forget, the drawers to your toolbox are locked. You have the key in a safe place? How could anyone possibly steal anything from your toolbox? Whoops, those tools will be going cheaply online in the morning. Thankfully, however, there is now another way. Introducing the UTS-17. So, how does it work? It starts with a floor-mounted or wall locating shoe. The product has a hardened locking arm, which is spring-loaded for automatic release. The product has a high security lock. There are 70,000 key combinations. Here we see the swivel caster has easily assembled locating pegs. Next, we have the fixed caster with its V-shaped locating peg. The UTS-17 can be configured in two ways. One, with the drawers accessible, or two, with the drawers facing the wall. Here we see more clearly just how the fixed caster locates. Now we see just how the swivel caster engages the lock arm automatically. With the box positioned, the arm slides across and the high security lock secures it in place. As a final point, if you upgrade your toolbox, the UTS-17 is easy to relocate. So let's get this straight. There's now a patented product available that's easy to install, it doesn't damage the toolbox, it can be secured to the ground or the wall, that's also capable of withstanding an industry specification gold attack test. Remember those anti-tipping labels? No longer a cause for concern with UTS-17. And what about trading up? Surely you'll have to buy another unit if you swap your box for something larger. Not with UTS-17. It's easy to relocate and reinstall. So let's recap. Your box can be wheeled away, the drawers pried open. It can even tip over, but not with UTS-17. UTS-17, finally, the peace of mind you and your tools deserve. <laughs>